If you'd like to learn how to do a dar stroke, stay tuned and watch this short video. Hi, my name is Mark Leichner and this is Marko Davidko from Kaizen MMA Academy and today we're going to show you, or Marko is going to show you his dar's choke. Marco has very long arms and it's his specialty and I had a, a, a comment on YouTube asking to, for, for me to show the darts choke but since Marco is much better in darts than me he's going to show you the, the choke so Marco, take it away Alright guys, so we are going to start we're going to do two different darts setups so the first one is going to be from side control this can be done from uh, top half guard but it's a little bit different so just from, uh, from regular side control, what I'm fishing for here is his underhook. So I, I can force I can force the darts here. I can force the darts sometimes by pushing my arm through. Or I can just wait for his underhook. I'm not going to give him the underhook like this, but I'm just going to pretend like I'm fighting for it. So that, so that he's, he has to work for it, and then when he gets it, that's when I would sink the darts in. So the way I sink it in is almost like I'm punching down, almost like a ground and making him down. So it's, it's really like I'm holding his head up with my arm and my other arm is just pushing through because I gotta crush his underhook here. Uh, and I'm doing this before he gets the full underhook. So if he gets the full underhook, it's gonna be impossible to do. So you're giving him the underhook, but giving him you know, a, a, a boundary here that he can't go through. So he has the underhook, and now I'm pushing through and lifting his head with my other hand. So what I'm aiming for is I'm aiming for my thumb and the root of my thumb to go through his neck. So to go basically behind his neck and I want to anchor my thumb here. So when I do this, this is half of the work done, right? Now there are defenses from here that he can implement, he can roll out, he can move on the other side, he can twist his arm out and stuff like that, so it's not over until I lock my hands through. Uh, so that's where the second hand comes in. So this is, I'm holding his head up, I anchored my other hand and I'm switching to my elbow pushing his head down. So I'm all the time constantly applying pressure to him at this point. So he can't get up, he can't move much, um, my, my whole weight basically is, is on him right now. So what I want to do is like doing a rear naked choke, basically I want to uh, aim the wrist area, not the fingers area, because you'll stretch your fingers out. Uh, so you are looking at the um, uh, bending your arm here to go on your wrist. Once that happens, you can push your elbow forward. Uh, and I'm not squeezing at this point because he can still move. And I will let him move if he wants at this point. So I can just move with him, but I'm not letting go of the, of the hold. So he can move, he can jerk, or he can jerk uh, around, he can, you know, try to get out, but he can't really get out if, uh, if my hold is not that tight. If my hold is tight here, he can roll me through, he can maybe power out of it and stuff like that. So you want to be almost relaxed here, but enough power so that he can't really just break my hold. Uh, so I'm moving around with him, I'm applying pressure, but I'm aware that he might roll me over. Once he stops moving, that's when I will apply force. And I will apply force gradually. So I will go 10%, I will go 20%, I will go 30% until it taps out. So I'm not going to go all out at once because it's easy to burn your arms out. So the way I do it again... Uh, yeah. So I'm in the side control here. My, I'm uh, honoring the side control position. So I'm, my knee is to his hip and my other knee is all the way to his shoulder. My arm is here, across his face, and my elbow is on his belly here. So I'm making him fight the underhook. So Let them see the, the elbow from this angle. Okay. So I'm making him fight for underhook. So his arm is here at this point, and I'm not going to just let him have the underhook. The moment he has it, I'm anchoring him here. So I'm clamping on his arm so he can't move forward. And I'm pushing my arm through with a punch until my thumb is anchored here. So at that point, when my hand, hand is here, elevating his head, I will switch it to my elbow pushing his head down. This is very uncomfortable right now for him, and will activate his defense mode, anything he has. So this is the point where I gotta work quick, I gotta secure the hold really quick. Again, I'm not squeezing the full power here. So 
the full speed would be something like this. So he would go through, and now it's secure a hold, and now he can try to defend, he can move around. You know, when you when you get comfortable here, you can start applying force while he is moving around. So you go 10%, 10%, 15% chances are that he will move himself into a position that's you know worse for him and better for me. So that's the uh, top side control bars. What about if you cannot finish for any reason? What about uh, the turn? Do you turn? Yeah, I do. Do you want security while browsing and no restrictions when watching content? The solution is to use NordVPN, which is the world's premier virtual private network provider. In some countries, the Netflix library is very limited and you cannot watch many shows and movies you could in the US. Many times I cannot watch content on other websites that display the dreaded message. NordVPN is the best VPN if you're looking for peace of mind when you're on a public Wi-Fi, but also from home. Its connection is lightning fast and you can securely access personal information or work files, encrypt your internet connection and keep your browsing history private. Get a huge 72% off plus 3 months free by clicking the link in the description and buying within 10 hours of landing on the website. So there are people that have DARS resistance, right? And I'm not necessarily trying to choke here. I'm more trying to um, basically tear his head off here. So this is a basic squeeze, like a rear naked choke. But what I can do to make it more powerful is just move my elbow backwards. So I'm holding here and I'm moving my elbow backwards. What about the chest? Do you push the chest? Yeah, you push the chest too. So but I'm applying pressure already here, right? So when I'm anchored down, when, I'm, when you stop moving around, I'm pushing my chest and I'm moving my elbow upwards until you tap out. So if I get to about 50% power, considering that I don't burn out my arms, so I get to a 50% power and he doesn't tap, that's when I would just elevate my elbow upwards and I will literally start cutting into his, into his neck. If that doesn't work, I have a few options here. So basically I have secured a hold and now we can branch out from here. What I can do is I can move a little bit forward and switch my hips to my right, where my, in this case, right leg, or the leg that's uh, near his hip, pushes through on this side and I'm going down this side. Yeah. If most of the time he will follow with me. So he will go up, switch his hips, and go up on me. But this is okay, we can end up in this position here. I can finish the dodge there. Uh, so on the other side, what about the other switch? Oh yeah, the other switch is also an option, but the, the other switch is a little bit less powerful. Because from here, I want to switch to this side, and when I do, I want to make sure that my lungs are on his skull, I'm pushing down his skull at the same time as I am pushing my head. Do you grab the leg? Uh, no need, because if you can move here, <laughs> no, no need really to. I don't really do it. You can, right? It's a, it's a extra security in the hole, but I don't, I didn't really find that necessary to. Uh, it's because really I'm cutting. I'm pushing the through. skull down and I'm moving the, the like a, you know, really really uncomfortable position. You can also do this from the and belly, right? So if I'm in the side control and I'm on a ground pound, so I'm here. I push the knee on belly and I want to start punching him because chances are this, this happened to me with people I used to train with. Uh, they understood what I'm looking for, right? So they didn't give me the underhook right away. So what I did is I went to the knee on belly position. So I'm going to go up here, start punching, and when they start to defend the knee on belly position, that's when I would go here and start initiating the, the same sequence basically. So the common mistakes here are going over the, the fingers. This is something I used to do all the time, and that's why I stretched out my, you know, my fingers here. So you always want to go over the wrist area, not over the fingers when you're pushing up. You don't have that much power, and it really hurts. So you want to go over the wrist always. If you have to push his head down, you can do that, or you can just punch through again. Just add the, you know, the uppercut into into the into the hold. So here I am. The other hand's position can be ideally under my chin, but depending of course on the uh, size of your training partner, that's not always applicable, so hold is most important, the hand position is as up as you can go. 
If I can go here, perfect, right? That's just fantastic. But that's not possible every single time. Great, and uh, just so you know, when Marco says you need to uppercut, it is because you need to deepen the, the, the hand, right? Just push it. So push it. It's not from the biceps, it's from the shoulder. Yeah, you just yeah, you relax yeah. your shoulder. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you. That's really nice and detailed. Uh, I hope you liked it, guys. And if you, like, uh, if you like this video, like it and share it. And you can also subscribe to my channel. And if you like a more in-depth MMA training, check out my instructions. My name is Mark Leitner, this is Marco Davidko, and I will see you again very soon.